When a natural disaster strikes, it doesn't look bright. Families are separated, heirlooms are lost. In short, a person's life turns upside down. In Hurricane Maria, Puerto Rico was savaged by horrific winds and rains. Uh, apartment complexes weren't able to, well, they lost their roofs. Schools weren't able to operate. In total, Puerto Rico wasn't able to operate. So what happened to their economy? Most people see, fail to see at least, that disasters not only have a physical effect, but a much longer lasting effect, an economical effect. So one of the longest economical impacts from a natural disaster is the Dust Bowl. The Dust Bowl was an environmental disaster that hit a huge portion of the, natural, of the United States agricultural production. About 80 years ago, water pattern shift causing uh, no rain to hit the Midwest. And since this area was largely occupied by farmers, most people, well, there weren't really any crops left. And uh, the, the drought killed the crop, sorry, the drought killed the crops and the wind blew the excess soil, uh, causing enormous clouds of dust. <coughs> it deposited dust literally everywhere from California to the United States, to, sorry, Washington, D.C. Dust suffocated livestock and caused pneumonia in children as well. So also because of this dust bowl occurred during the sorry, Great Depression, farmers had to sell 10% of their farms. And because of them losing crops, they already lived off of uh, federal relief as well. Families had to relocate to places where most of the jobs were already taken. 21% of all rural families in the Great Plains federal received federal uh, relief. It was estimated that about $1 billion was spent trying to give them federal relief as well. And that's just in 1930s money. Now that would be about $167 trillion. Uh, many places are now unfarmable due to this natural disaster. Looking at the consequences, the Dust Bowl affected the U.S. economy negatively. It was a substantial contributor to the Great Depression. The Great Depression also was basically like a coin. And as a coin, there are two sides of it. And there were some good products that came out of this reaction. As the economy decreased 50% within the first couple of years of the Great Depression, uh, people lost their faith in Hoover and decided to go ahead and vote for FDR. FDR was able to use government money to create programs for federal relief and social security, and as well as to fight the war poverty. By writing the New Deal, a series of programs and policies of release, reform, and uh, recovery, FDR gave the jobs to those in poverty, which resulted in some of the greatest monuments of America being born, such as the Great uh, Golden Gate Bridge and the Chrysler Building. Now, many of you know about one of the most famous natural disasters, Hurricane Katrina. It's been over 10 years since Hurricane Katrina hit. It's one of the most devastating natural disasters out of all of the disasters that hit U.S. It was the sixth strongest hurricane to ever come out of the Atlantic side and uh, the third strongest to hit the United States. It costed over $100 billion, roughly. And since a lot of losses were in low-income, since mainly a lot of the losses were in low-income areas that didn't have a lot of insurance, 300,000 homes were left un uninhabitable. Katrina left about 118 million cubic yards, which uh, is about 18,000 football fields of debris. It also damaged a 90% of the U.S. oil production as it hit mainly outside of the inland. It damaged about 457 oil and gas pipelines and spilled as much oil as in the Exxon Valdez disaster. The after effects included oil prices to jump from $3 a barrel and gas prices closer to $5 a gallon. The economy was in the U.S. was growing at 3.8% before Katrina. After Katrina, it was about 1.8%. And these were just some of Katrina's media effects. The hurricane forced 770,000 people to relocate, and not many of them returned as well, as uh, they didn't want to go because their homes were lost. Everything before them was lost. Their office buildings were lost. It also hurt the New Orleans port, causing $260 million in damage, uh, like, and also hit some of their key industries like the sugar, chem chemical factories, uh, the shrimping industry, and as well as uh, casinos. And many of these businesses had to relocate as well. Federal government helped by giving 120 billion, but that still hasn't seen, has helped a little bit. 
In June of 2015, the labor force was about 660,000. Sorry, 606,000. And then that's compared to June of 2005's 632,000, which is the month before Katrina hit. But what's something that we've seen recently is that the unemployment rate has reduced from 15.9% in October, so a couple of months after the hurricane, to 6.1% in the June of 2015, as we can see right here. So 15.9% and now around 6.1%. So this basically means that the economy is making a comeback, slowly but surely. The economy of New Orleans was revitalized after the natural disaster of Hurricane Katrina, and yet still to return to the pre-Katrina state. Now, one of the most recent hurricanes was Hurricane Katrina, that, sorry, Hurricane Maria, that hit Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is already in an 11-year recession, and earlier in May this year, they filed the largest ever bankruptcy for the U.S. For my primary research, I decided to interview one of my uh, friends who was uh, the survivor of Hurricane Maria. According to her, she said that they weren't able to do anything for the first couple of days due to trees blocking the streets, so no one could really go to stores or anything. At gas stations, the prices really didn't change as much as in Hurricane Katrina, but rather uh, the lines did. They decided to, instead of limiting, uh, they decided to limit gas, so the lines would be uh, to eight hours or plus. Also, the same would be in supermarkets since they didn't have that many resources. Some people would be so agitated in these lines that they would bring weapons with them. This also start, sparked a crime spree throughout Puerto Rico. No businesses were open, not even restaurants. It was estimated that around over six, it would take over six months just to re-adjust, sorry, re-take back the electrical grid. Baxter, one of the major manufacturing countries, sorry, uh, manufacturers of IV bags, had three factories in Puerto Rico. Uh, after 10 weeks, still one of those factories was being ran off of diesel. And because of this diesel engine and generating and just a whole bunch of mess after the hurricane, it ended up being that most of them were, well, there's an IV bag shortage over the whole of the U.S. Doctors ended up conserving all of their IV bags and making sure that uh, pharmacies wouldn't get them. It was basically becoming who would be able to save more people. And for now, that would be pharmaceuticals. Uh, with Puerto Rico losing the electrical grid, families also moving out of the territory and manufacturing plants being incapacitated, the economy of the U.S. has changed and will continue to change to, throughout the next couple of years to accommodate the large losses that Puerto Rico went through. All the disasters I stated were not expected to be that big of a deal. Yet more than 10 years later, New Orleans is still recovering from Hurricane Katrina and may never reach its height before the hurricane. Hurricane Maria has hit P Puerto Rico causing similar systems to hit the overall economy due to the electrical bid grid being completely knocked out of the island for three plus months, as it hurt the U.S. from coast to coast. So next time you hear about disaster coming towards you, remember that it was no big deal to New Orleans. It was no big deal to Puerto Rico. Make it a big deal to you. Thank you. Sorry, I forgot about that. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Right.
point of the talk is for people who are landlocked, right? We don't often experience things like this. I mean, we do like with tornadoes, but not to the scale. Um, how do, how, I think I think part of the point of the talk is to kind of help the rest of the country understand that these disasters don't just affect um, Puerto Rico or Houston, right, or New Orleans. Um, they directly impact them, but the, the economic impacts are kind of more far-reaching. That's, is that kind of the, yes. the, the idea yeah. behind this? Mm -hmm. okay. I think, though, maybe to speak to Brendan's comment a little bit, um, I didn't quite get that sense. And he mentioned a couple of times that, um, that the U.S. economy changes because of these. But I didn't, I didn't really get a clear sense of how, in what specific ways does, like, you had great numbers about Katrina and about the, the, you know, the amount of money that was lost in that location, how much it cost to rebuild. But those are more direct economic impacts. So what would be, um, what would be interesting numbers? Uh, what would be the impact on the rest of us? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I think I think that would probably help make that more relatable to us, right? That, that oh, this isn't just about New Orleans. Um, I can see how this affects the U.S. economy. Mm -hmm. Sarah. Um, I think maybe a smaller scale question, but the economy, like there's some I'm kind of in a little bit misleading. Um, maybe yeah. I think of the economy as aftermath of the disaster or something. Okay. Because I thought you were going to be talking about the economy in general. maybe take take a few pieces of that of the information right. some of the numbers and put them on the different 